trigonometry with right-angled triangles, finding an unknown side, lesson two. We've already gone through the steps for how to find an unknown side. And the steps are going to be the same. We have a right angle triangle, we know one angle and one side, and we want to find one of the other sides. So our steps were label the sides that have a number or a letter on them. So here's my angle. This side has a letter. It's the longest side opposite the right angle. It's the hypotenuse. This side has a number. It's next to the angle. It's the adjacent. Next step in any trig problem is always choose and write the ratio. You'll remember Sokotoa These ones, Sokotoa helps us remember the three ratios. We want the ratio that has A and H, that will be cos. So we write the ratio correctly. Cos theta equals A over H. You must remember to include the angle in your ratio formula. The next step is always to substitute the known values. Cos of the angle, and the angle is 30 degrees, don't forget the degrees sign, equals, the adjacent is 5, the hypotenuse is x. Now here is where it looks different to the last examples that I've shown you. The last step is still rearrange and solve. But x is on the bottom. We can't just deal with this 5 in the same way that we used to. So with this previous problem, I had x over 7. Divided by 7 is really easy to change. We do times by 7 on the other side. Here, the x is on the bottom. There's a couple of different ways of dealing with this. Mathematically, what's correct is that we do two steps of working. And I'm going to do this working in red because I don't actually need you to show this line. The only thing I can really move here is the divide by x, which I can reverse by doing times by x on both sides, which effectively means I get x times cos of 30 degrees equals 5. Now that hasn't got x on its own. But what it has done is it got x up to the top line. I've got x times cos of 30 equals 5. I just want x on its own, so I need to get rid of this times cos 30, which I can do by doing its opposite. Divide by cos 30 on both sides, which effectively gives me x equals 5 divided by cos of 30 degrees. Now I know what I need to type into the calculator. Now's the time to get the calculator out, not before. You wait until you know what to type in. 5 divided by cos 30. If you get a funny sort of answer, remember, use your double arrow key to get a decimal response. Because x equals 5.7, oops, 5.77. Units of length were in meters. We're finding the length. That's meters. A quick check to make sure that the hypotenuse ended up longer than the other side. Yes, it did. We're good. So I still only need four lines of working for perfect working. I don't need that middle line that's in red. But if you find it helps you remember what to do, you're welcome to include that line. Now I know that rearranging equations can be a problem for some of us. So it's okay to have a reminder. If x is on the bottom, that means it's the denominator of the fraction, you're going to have to divide. 
and one way of looking at it which can help you remember how to get your correct working. It's not as mathematically good. See where the x started and where the cos 30 started and then see where they ended up. The x was on the bottom of the fraction, now it's over here. The cos 30 was here, now it's on the bottom of the fraction. They swapped. So if x is on the bottom, one thing you might like to do is remember to swap x and the sine cos 10. That's cos. It's not as good as remembering how it works and being able to rearrange the equation, but if you're finding that you're not remembering, that's a little help trick.